Spotify video. Yeah. And, and uh, it says we're back. So folks, are you still out there? Let, let me know if you're still out there. The battery died on my phone. And uh, if you're still there, we'll continue. Uh, uh, so as of yet, we don't have anyone uh, saying hello. So, uh, because it took a few, oh, four, there's a, oh, Missy's there. Hi, Missy. Okay. And Wanda, good. Okay, good, good, good. So, and Marzi's there. Okay, so let's continue. Um, so, the question um, that you answered was on children and, and what about yes. kids. So, we've got that one done. Next one. Outside of my mom's apartment, about 10 feet away, there's a large electrical services distribution box the size of a small car, which hums constantly. I'm not really sure what it is, but I assume it's where the power comes into the property and gets distributed to all of the units in her building. She is suffering from constant fatigue and what looks like the beginning of dementia with poor mental clarity. Could this electrical thing be causing or contributing to her health issues? Well, I'm gonna let Nick answer that, but before I do, I just wanna say, get the meter that Nick's talking about. And so that you can check and see, and you'll you'll find out immediately. But I'll leave that up to you, Nick. What, what do you think? Yeah, when it comes to anything that is, let's say, a huge electrical apparatus, usually the risks would be if you are right next to it. So, for example, something that could happen, uh, and that would be silly, but that could affect your health, is if you have a, a bedroom and you're not aware that, let's say, on the other side of your bedroom wall, you have the fridge of a neighbor. You, you, in your head in that case would be exposed to the EMFs that are caused by this big motor that is inside the fridge. So that's an example. But we're talking about maybe a one to three feet distance. So if it's not very close, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, it's, it's not very likely that it's a problem. Okay. Okay. And I'm looking at other questions. Uh, when you fly, do you cover your head? Okay, we already answered those. And let's see. Well, we're, that's good with questions. Uh, uh, Paula's back in the house from Alaska. Jessica's here is Toronto. Alita's back. We're here. Thanks, Alita. Okay. Uh, what about smart meters? Do gloves work? Do uh, gloves, okay, that's two questions. Well, smart meters first are utility meters. They can be water, they can be electricity, they can be natural gas. And instead of, well, smart is a misnomer because in reality, smart really means wireless in pretty much all technology nowadays. So the problem with smart meter is again, another source of radiation that you're adding in, in your home. And sometimes very close to the bedroom because at the moment there's no regard to good sleep or good health when it comes to where they're going to be installed. So sometimes people start sleeping but very poorly. They don't know what's wrong with their health and they realize, oh my God, all the smart meters of my entire building are right there on the wall outside and they're very close to my bedroom. So if uh, you are within 10 feet of a smart meter, it could impact your sleep dramatically. So, and some people feel more sensitive to smart meters somehow. They have a specific frequency in them that make a lot of people feel symptoms. Uh, do gloves work? I'm, I'm guessing you ask about EMF blocking gloves. Uh, I've heard some people who are, and we're talking about extreme extreme cases of people who are uh, very, very sensitive to, to EMFs and use gloves because just touching a cell phone uh, makes them ill or something like that. I, I think I think it could, yes, uh, the answer w would be yes. There are such thing as EMF blocking gloves. That would not be my top priority in EMF clothing though. So Marzi and I um, spent some time at Swiss Mountain Clinic last year. For those of you who've seen, we've announced that we're gonna be there the last two weeks of October this year, and you can see more at our, on our website about that. But while we were there, there was a young woman, maybe 26 year old woman who was so sensitive to EMFs, if someone had a, a, a phone, a cell phone, if they were on their cell phone in the same room she was in, it would trigger a seizure and she'd have a seizure. And it happened right in front of me. And I caught her as she was falling to the ground and because she was going into a seizure and she just went right down out of a chair and I caught her. 
So some people are extremely sensitive to this. Now, uh, Nick, a question that I thought of uh, in answering about the smart meters on the wall yeah. outside the house. What about um, if people can't move, I've heard that there's paint that you can use or are there other protective mechanisms to shield a room? Yes, uh, so the, these things are, let's say, fall under the advanced steps of EMF mitigation. That's a part of module four in the course, for example, but it's a long story because these things need to be assessed by a professional. So in the course, we talk about, okay, in which situation do you want to hire what's called the EMF uh, mitigation specialist? And you have two sets of professionals, especially, well, in the U.S. that um, are let's say there are insufficient number for me to recommend them uh, the building biologists that's one profession and the other ones are called a uh, geo vital uh, consultants and that's uh, they are been they have been certified by a clinic in Austria a functional medicine clinic running for for decades now so these two types of professional can help you uh, do these major works to a room in order to create a completely uh, almost no EMF environment this includes paint so sometimes geo vital especially their approach is to paint all walls and to create really an enclosure in which radiation from the outside from any source the cell phone towers and neighbors anything do not come inside uh, another strategy that has been used before including by doctors like Dr. Klinghart is a bed canopy and uh, this is uh, basically a mesh that you put over the bed that looks a little bit a uh, little bit medieval uh, looking uh, right it's a mosquito net uh, so you put that over the bed and then you sleep in a very low EMF environment the problem that I have um, recommending a one-size-fits-all when it comes to these situations is that most people don't have the meters to assess before and then after insulation and these things do require a large investment of money and time so if you are to do them my recommendations is to consult with professionals who can uh, either do the install for you or help you uh, assess before and after level and really guide you to the to the process right it's 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 as important as hiring an electrician to do major electrical work because you don't want to screw something up or cause fire hazard or or even do illegal work right when it comes to doing your own renovations the same thing can be said if you want to mitigate EMS to this extent the, the good news though is some people are living in the middle of New York City and have these shielded rooms and are able to to mitigate the effects tremendously because it is possible it is just a greater investment for people who feel more sensitive and might need it okay folks i'm on stage in uh 10 minutes so i've got to go uh, right, uh, uh, <laughs> uh but there's a couple things i want to say sure i mean obviously what nick is giving us here is incredibly important information do you think it's going to be less important as technology improves or more important i think it, this is critically important information so please sign up for his course he's devoting his life to getting this information to us he doesn't own a company that's selling uh, emf clothing or emf paint nothing just knowledge please sign up for his course and if it's more than you can afford please do it uh, with a partner, you know, like a neighbor or a friend say, hey, let's let's joint venture do this so that we, we can afford to do it. It's not expensive, but, you know, if you want to pool your f resources with a friend, support this guy. Give, give him your support so he can continue to go out there and continue educating us. And with that, I'm going to say, Nick, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's uh, it's my honor, really, to be talking to everyone. And uh, please uh, let let me know if you have questions about the course, anything. And uh, I can uh, also uh, maybe Mars, you can write my customer support email if people have specific questions about the course or technical questions. It's uh, hello at non tinfoilemf.com and that's the title of my book so uh, people can reach me there or in the comments I can come back tomorrow for people who are listening to replay thank you so much thank you Nick all right everyone bye bye see you next time